much like a CPA firm. However, we do not do audits or tax returns. We only perform non-attest services. If you'd like to learn more, please feel free to visit our website. On the home page on the upper right hand corner is a link to our case studies, which really gives you a great idea as to how we help our clients. Let's go through the agenda quickly. Um, we're going to talk about what an ERP is, and then we'll do um, talk about a little bit about why we picked NetSuite. Um, you know, obviously we were we were considering a number of softwares to partner with, and NetSuite was a really great option for us. We're going to talk about you know some of the benefits that an ERP has that will help you grow our business industry served. We'll look at um, the way NetSuite does our implementations. And then we'll do a couple of video demos for you as well, where you can just get an idea of some of the features and what the software looks like. If you need us to, we would be happy to do an online demo for you. So if you have questions or you'd like something more tailored to your business, we definitely can do that and have a discussion. Um, would love to have the opportunity. So to start, to better understand an ERP, let's look at the processes that are essential to growing and running a business. First, you need to know where your inventory is. You need to have efficient order management. Obviously, you need to track whether or not you're making money or losing money. Um, you need to have an idea of who your people are and what they're doing, as well as track your leads and opportunities. At the most basic level, our, a software that you choose should have all of these functions for your company. For example, employees in accounting and sales can rely on the same information for their specific needs. So enabling businesses to make better decisions faster and encourage growth. So it should have streamlined business processes um, and then a shared database as well. So I'm gonna do a couple of quick case studies for you next. Um, one with a healthcare company and another with a financial services organization. Looks like we're having, oh. Kate, can you unmute yourself so we can hear it? Whether it's physical activity interventions, diet interventions, we're trying to make diabetes care holistic. So at MDRF, we try to change, you know, the lives of people and we're trying to use education to make people aware to make the changes that are necessary for proper prevention and good treatment. So prevention starts with awareness. Instead of saying, don't eat A, B, C, D, it would be nice if we had an alternative which was healthy and yet something you could enjoy. So India's a rice eating nation. Rice is very high in glycemic index, which means it raises your blood glucose. So we have a rice from our food and nutrition department research that is, is white rice. It tastes as good and yet it doesn't elevate your blood glucose as much. That's one of the things we're really proud of and our patients are really happy with. It started in one room with one staff. And from there, today, MDRF is in four campuses. We've worked with almost every major developed country in the world. We've got funds in the US, Australia, UK, Germany, France, you name it. But if you ask us what challenges, it is definitely sustaining an institution like this, getting the funding necessary for that, and seeing that long term it survives and continues to do the good work that it's doing today. Prior to using NetSuite, we were working on a software called Tally ERP, where most of the reports we had to manually prepare it. We made the management understand that there is a need to change to a, a robust solution like NetSuite. The core finance functions, including the inventory, the order to cash, procure to pay, everything runs on NetSuite ERP. So we have a number of reports, we have a number of dashboards, KPIs that has really helped us save a lot of time. Being a non-profit organization, we have an obligation to report to the donors, the home ministry, and the income tax departments. NetSuite is able to run reports across grant periods that makes it more easy for us. It's been quite vital in helping us sort out our data, uh, making our accounts quite clear, ensuring transparency for our scientists, or for us, as well as for our funders. This particular software has really made a tremendous change. It's been really helpful for us. So recommending NetSuite to somebody else is definitely top of 
globalist. The future is about kind of bringing the world together. So trying to get funding opportunities from different agencies. And next week, I think we play a very vital role there because it will help us to keep things clear, transparent, easy for people to see, for us to audit, for people to be able to believe in us and fund us being able to take our research to the next level. We have a lot of veterans of this space and a lot of expertise and without giving them really the proper system to achieve what their potential should be, you know, what good is it? Bankrate did start as the Bankrate Monitor and from there has evolved now to really a full service online site where we provide great tools, great information for consumers to solve the, their life's financial journey. Our properties are bankrate.com, creditcards.com, and caring.com. The company had grown via acquisition over time. It created a lot of work. We had two versions of one system. We had two versions of another system. There was nothing clean or easy or efficient about it. It's a drag on everything, and it, it really reverberates all the way down to the people. And if you don't give the people a system to really kind of flourish and not have to deal with all the little stuff, you know, then you're not going to get to that next level. With NetSuite, we have a system that complements, you know, how people work to bring out the knowledge that we've, you know, hired people for. The reaction of the people that were going to use the tool every day was like, wow, this is, this is great. I can start here and, and drill all the way down to here without leaving the screen, without going to some other different application. I mean, they just loved it. We need a system that can be, you know, super agile and really kind of mold to our company, but we're also public. So we need a system that can handle all of the compliancy issues and all of the controls that we need to institute. NetSuite's really at that sweet spot. To being responsible for the quality and the accuracy of our accounting, it's comfort to know that we have a standardized system, that we have this visibility. It reduces the likelihood of errors and helps us produce, with even more assurance, a very high quality financial product. So hopefully that is helpful. So next we're gonna talk a little bit about why we chose NetSuite. So when our firm, you know, many of you know us, not everybody does on the call, but when our firm was first started, we began as a finance and accounting firm. And due to demand and our network, we quickly launched a retained search practice. Um, after eight years of growth, we found another way to better service our customers. We believe that with real-time data and solid financial practices, our customers can better manage their business. NetSuite was the obvious choice. NetSuite's scale and ability to execute are unsurpassed. They have over 18,000 customers all running on the same version of the product. So sometimes clients will say, you know, software will say it's cloud, but it's not truly cloud because there's different versions. Um, with support for emerging companies to some of the largest global enterprises, NetSuite remains the fastest growing financial management platform in the world. And, and growth is not new to them. That was another reason why we liked it as well. In fact, everyone else is trying to catch up. They're proving reliable and scalable success is what caught the attention of Oracle and led to the acquisition back in 2016. So rest assured that their tried into experience and unparalleled support for their customers continues as, next, as NetSuite grows. They had a record 2018 growth. They added over, over 3,000 new customers that signed up in the last 12 months. So very exciting stuff. So regardless of what kind of company you are, most businesses measure outcomes. On the top line, you've got revenue, profit, gross margin, your asset balance. On the bottom line, expenses, liabilities, cash flow. Um, companies assume all things are well if those metrics are trending well, but there may be hidden threats that are lurking. So blind spots that prevent you from truly seeing trends that may hamper growth. You may have a flawed revenue mix. Um, there may be inefficient business processes. You know, we've implemented NetSuite ourselves, so that definitely uh, was the case for us. Um, new competitors happening all the time and employee productivity. So as you grow, your level of control changes. You can't check in on every sales rep, every warehouse person, every project manager, things start dropping. And if you have multiple systems, it just creates chaos. And there are multiple destabilizers as well, such as, let's talk about COVID, right? Economic change, trade agreements, localization gaps, uh, volatility in foreign exchange, global adoption changes, fraud, audits, new taxes and tariffs. 
um, there will be certain inflection points in your company's journey where you can follow a new path or get mirrored in the old ways, such as evolving business models, new engagement platforms, new marketing channels, corporate social responsibility, uh, virtual, that's a big talking point right now too, virtualized workforce and artificial intelligence. So as NetSuite has worked towards their mission to deliver one system in the cloud to help businesses grow, they've learned that every business has three key areas to grow beyond. Number one, visibility. Number two, control. And number three, agility. So visibility means being able to see how your business has formed performed historic, historically, how it's operating now, and being able to spot trends that could lead to more opportunities for efficiency or growth. So maybe you have one um, area of revenue that's growing and you wanna invest more heavily within that, or maybe one that's not doing so well and you wanna reduce costs there. The greatest threat to growth though is loss of control. So with control, you can grow the right way. And then agility is about capitalizing on opportunities by reacting quickly when they present themselves. So control is great. It helps you when you know your path, but what if that route changes? You now have agility that you can see things and quickly make decisions and change what you're doing. So, but don't trust us. Um, NetSuite has over 18,000 customers of every size in every industry in every part of the world. So this is one of the other reasons why I really like NetSuite. If you look at the industries across the board, and there's more as well that NetSuite services, um, they have pre-configured software. The software is pre-configured based on best practices of their clients. So what that means for you is, and we'll talk a little bit about this later, is you have a reduced time of implementation, you also have a reduced cost, and then you're able to leverage best practices of other companies that have had successful implementations. You know, for me, um, you know, I'm an Oracle girl myself. I always grew up with Oracle. But it's kind of, you know, it was always before the way it was implemented, it was sort of a blank canvas, which can be really overwhelming to already strapped and people with have a low level of resources available. So to my point, Sweet Success is a culmination of a multi-year transformation effort to combine the NetSuite Unified Suite. So it's got 20 years of industry leading practices, a new customer engagement model, business optimization methods, and a unified industry cloud solution. The end result is that customers are more referenceable, they're up and running faster, and there's less cost with less change. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about some functionality in the software. And again, this is just touching at the top, but I wanted to show you, um, I think we have mostly finance accounting people on the call. So I wanted to show you from a finance and accounting perspective, some of the capabilities that NetSuite may have. So NetSuite Advanced Financials brings additional financial management functionality to NetSuite. There's budgeting, expense allocations, amortization, and statistical accounts. It helps ensure strong financial management by managing and monitoring budget versus actuals and more. I have a quick video to share that gives you a high level overview of how the financials can help any business. Financial management is the backbone of any business and is vital to long-term health and viability. Accounting departments need the right tools to most efficiently apply financial rigor and support rapid growth. NetSuite Advanced Financials extends the financial management capabilities of NetSuite by providing solutions for expense allocation and amortization, as well as statistical accounts and better budget management and reporting. It automates the allocation and amortization of large volumes of daily financial transactions, which accelerates the financial close and ensures compliance and consistent treatment month after month. To assist in automating complicated allocations and reporting requirements, NetSuite Advanced Financials also creates statistical accounts for non-monetary values and data such as headcount, floor space, and common shares. Lastly, it allows the creation of multiple budget records, including department, project, location, or item, providing stronger visibility and improving centralized financial controls. All in all, NetSuite's financial management solution expedites daily financial transactions, accelerates the financial close, and ensures compliance. So beyond the numbers, so you can see the big picture with dashboards and KPIs, and we'll show you a little bit about that. They're standard out-of-the-box reports, but you can also easily um, adjust the, customize those to your business requirements. Um, you can get financial reports from anywhere using a web browser or even your phone, and they're very flexible and can be customized. So you can drag and drop into columns, you can look at different date ranges, you can look at different scenarios and compare differently. 
Um, so it's a very easy to use report tool. It's called Financial Report Builder, um, and it really helps you craft the financial statements you need for recording um, or for reporting requirements. And layouts can also be tailored very nicely. So you can capture and store transactions for multi-dimensional reporting in a single version of the truth. We all know how that goes. Um, it goes beyond the metrics and tracks statistical and operational data to enable a comprehensive view of your business and then also helps you diagnose financial issues with on the fly and drill down transactional details to quickly take action and drive business performance. So I'll show you a little bit about that next. Welcome to NetSuite Suite Success Financials First Standard Edition. In this video, we're going to demonstrate financial reporting. I'm going to take on the role of a controller. Here's a look at my dashboard. A wide variety of financial metrics and trending indicators represent pieces of the corporate financial position that require daily attention. But formal financial reporting, income statements, balance sheet, and cash flow statements are a click away. I can run an income statement report directly here from the dashboard tile, or more formally, from the reporting financial menu selection. Note that I can customize the look and feel, or the default view, of a particular report like this, and if I do, I can simply save my version of this standard report using the Add to Shortcuts feature in the top left of the menu bar under the star. Along the left of NetSuite's financial report writer, the traditional income statement accounts and the amount totals align in a single column. Along the bottom, the relative date ranges, subsidiary context, and column breakout options by department, class, location, or accounting period are arranged for ease of use. Notice now that there's a more up arrow link that allows me to filter by those same options of department, class, location, as well as customer or items. If I wanted to see the report filtered, only for a single class or a group of classes, these features allow that flexibility as well. While we're looking along the bottom of the report writer here, it's important to note that I can always simply collapse or expand rows to get to the level of detail required. These reports can then be saved to Excel, PDF, CSV, and Microsoft Word formats. Lastly, I can efficiently print from the browser email directly to a user, or schedule NetSuite reports to run on a predefined and recurring basis. All the heavy lifting of automated, repeated financial reporting is built in for each user. Now that we've reviewed the mechanics of the report writer, let's personalize this report and save it for reuse. If I set the column to break the report out by class instead of total, then I can name it, save it to my favorites, and my changes will be preserved. Notice that the standard income statement is now labeled custom income statement. I can personalize that by clicking on the customize button in the lower left corner. Notice how NetSuite automatically puts my cursor in the name field, where I can go ahead and call this the income statement by class report, so that I'll remember the changes I made from the descriptive title. As we see from this page, I'm allowed to make any number of changes to the layout, columns, sorting, and calculations within the report builder. After I click save, you'll notice the custom title change, and now I can save it to my shortcuts. NetSuite automatically saves it to the saved reports menu. The standard financial reports from NetSuite all leverage the same financial report writer engine. So the balance sheet, cash flow, and trial balance style reports are all familiar and prepackaged in Financials First. That concludes our very brief look at the NetSuite Financial Report Writer. So the next thing we're going to talk about is global compliance. And this might not affect any of you, but thought we would at least have the discussion. Um, many customers have multiple accounting books and they've got multiple calendars. There might be localized tax calculations and reporting as well as a local income statement and balance sheet. Um, so NetSuite Financial Reporting provides global support for both internationalization as well as localization. You can generate accurate financial statements and reports that comply with either US GAAP or IFRS.
Welcome to NetSuite's Suite Success demonstration for Global Financials. In this video, we are going to demonstrate NetSuite OneWorld, which allows global consolidation and reporting for multi-subsidiary organizations. I am logged in as a controller, which means that my dashboard is loaded with reports and KPIs to tell me the overall health of my global organization. With NetSuite OneWorld, I can slice and dice my reporting and dashboard views to provide financial data on specific subsidiaries of my business. Right from our dashboard, we can see our subsidiary navigator. While this looks like a simple hierarchical view of my organization, this portlet actually allows me to change the entire contents of my dashboard to one specific subsidiary with just one click. For example, right now I'm looking for some specific KPIs on my UK subsidiary. By clicking on the UK from the subsidiary navigator, I get KPIs, reminders, and reports that are specific to the UK in seconds. It even converted my KPIs to the British pound. NetSuite uses rate providers to pull in currency exchange rates on a daily basis, so I know that my reporting is always accurate and up to date. Now let's see how to slice and dice data from our income statement. From the bottom of our income statement, we can alter the report's date range, subsidiary context, and column breakout. We'll start by filtering this report to just one subsidiary, UK, and watch as NetSuite translates our reporting to the British pound, all in real time. We can also drill down to line level detail and further into specific transactions that were posted by our UK sub. As we come back to our income statement, we can see a myriad of ways to view this report. If we filter back to our parent company and then change the column field to subsidiary, our income statement will transform by column view of each of our subsidiaries. This time, the report will convert back to the base currency of the parent company, which is USD. NetSuite OneWorld also allows us to record multiple kinds of intercompany transactions, such as intercompany journals, sales, and purchase orders. Let's look at this intercompany journal, for instance. Here we have a journal entry between our US subsidiary and our UK subsidiary. This journal includes lines between two subsidiaries, but NetSuite can post to all subsidiaries at the same time. By streamlining these subsidiaries in one platform, my company avoids reconciliation issues at month end. To the right, I can see these lines are marked as yes to eliminate. This tells me that during my month end period close checklist, NetSuite is going to look for all these lines marked yes and automatically create an elimination journal entry, avoiding errors and time needed to do so manually. Speaking of that period close checklist, let's take a look at ours. This period close checklist is my actual to-do list at the end of each period and includes key steps needed to lock down our general ledger at period end. We can see many steps here, including locking down accounts receivable and accounts payable, as well as creating the elimination of intercompany journals that I will send for approval before posting. While on this checklist, let's also look at the step for revalue open foreign currency balances. This step will post revaluation journal entries for all open foreign currency transactions that need to be revalued at month end. Once posted, my unrealized gain loss report shows me the direct result of this month end revaluation process. Like all reports in NetSuite, this is a drillable report where I can see all my base transactions. Thank you for watching this demonstration. If you have any questions, please reach out to your account manager. So next we're going to talk about revenue management and how to automate RevRack. So NetSuite's financial management software enables accounting departments to account for any contract under any revenue standard. For a given set of products and services, including software and service contracts specified in accordance with ASC 605. So it also provides a robust and comprehensive configurable capabilities based on 605 and 606, which is IRF. IFRS 15, which enables systematic compliance for complexities associated with accurately managing revenue contracts. You're able to report financial results accurately within RevRec mandates based on global accounting standards. You can leverage a powerful multi-book accounting engine that record, can record and post revenue related activity to all books concurrently. Welcome to the demonstration of NetSuite's Advanced Revenue Management, the 
These revenue features allow us to manage complex revenue allocations, as well as maintain separate fair value pricing tables, all without duplicating or modifying existing product SKUs. I'm gonna start from the role of a revenue manager. Let's assume our company sold the same two products to two different customers. Emma Richards sold sales order 425 for West Coast IO. I can see she sold a SaaS license with a 15% discount, professional services, and for a total of 28,400. Will Clark sold East Coast IO, sales order 426. Identical products, pricing, again for a total of 28,400. Automation of both billing and revenue recognition starts at an item level. Let's go ahead and take a look. Think of an item like a product SKU. In the item record itself, we can dictate subsidiaries that can sell this product, revenue recognition rules for both a forecast and an actual plan, revenue allocation groups, our billing schedules, and even currencies in which we can build this item or recognize revenue. Setting these defaults at an item level eliminates duplicating SKUs to accommodate all of these attributes. On sales order 425, I can see a revenue arrangement has automatically been created by NetSuite. This is a separate record in NetSuite to manage how revenue will be recognized and it's independent from billing. I can see how NetSuite has automatically allocated revenue. After the allocation, each of these items will have respective revenue recognition rules. In this case, exact dates for our SaaS license and upon fulfillment for professional services. In this case, relative fair value allocation was used based on list price. We can also see NetSuite is managing contract deferral costs to recognize at a future date. The deferred cost journal entry is automatically created from the revenue arrangement. And looking at sales order 426, and observing the revenue arrangement, I can see that a different revenue allocation has taken place. In this case, more dollars were allocated to our SaaS license, and even though the same products were sold for the same price. NetSuite also took associated contract expenses and allocated them differently as well. NetSuite uses a separate fair value table to manage standalone selling prices and fair values. Let's take a look. We focused on the same two products sold for two customers. Here I can see East Coast and West Coast IOs have different fair values for the same products. We can dictate fair value pricing to a customer, subsidiary, class, location, custom dimension, or any combination thereof. Fair value pricing in NetSuite can also be dynamically calculated based on sales price of the entire contract. An example would be professional services calculated on a percentage of the entire contract value. Fair values can have effective dates, which make managing these on a quarterly or annual basis much easier. Once the initial setup is complete, there's no need for any risky manual intervention when it comes to revenue recognition. We can set reminders in NetSuite to update standalone selling prices and modify contracts for different customers, subsidiaries, or other dimensions. And stepping back and looking at our revenue recognition forecast report, we can see holistically how revenue is recognized to date, as well as over the life of the period of the contract. Again, I can see East Coast IO and West Coast IO for their same contract values, the revenue to be taking place differently over that life of the contract. Advanced revenue management also includes the ability to merge arrangements, edit existing arrangements, and treat revenue that's recognized but not yet billed as unbilled accounts receivable systematically. Thank you for watching this demonstration. If you have any questions, please reach out to your account manager. So the next piece we're going to talk about is automated order to cash process features. So the order management capabilities help streamline order processing by eliminating manual bottlenecks, preventing errors, and establishing a smooth flow from sales quote to order fulfillment, ensuring timely invoicing and payment. NetSuite's order and billing management capabilities integrate your sales, finance, and fulfillment teams, improving quote accuracy, eliminating billing errors, strengthening rev rack processes, and driving fulfillment accuracy and efficiency. 
some benefits of having an automated order to cash process are you're able to improve your cash flow, you can increase your on-time delivery, reduce your shipping costs, and most importantly, just be a trusted business partner. Welcome to NetSuite's Suite Success demonstration of the order management process. I'm logged in under the role of an operations user. Part of my responsibility is to review and approve sales orders, so I use my dashboard to stay on top of anything requiring my attention. Under my reminders, I see I have some sales orders awaiting my approval. I can either approve sales orders in bulk or drill in further to ensure full order accuracy and detail. I'll click on sales order 447 to review it before approving. Our company sells services, software, and hardware, which we can see are all included on this customer order. For our recurring subscription and maintenance, we utilize NetSuite's billing schedules to automatically produce invoices on the agreed upon dates, whether that's upfront or using another recurrence frequency such as monthly. Our installation services will be billed through a related project, but for our hardware, we typically drop ship items directly from our vendors to our customers. With NetSuite's drop ship automation, we automatically create a purchase order to our vendor once the sales order is approved, which I'll do now. Once I approve the sales order, we can see the originating sales order as well as the resulting purchase order is automatically created and sent to our vendor. Our preferred vendor, Harris Technology, was set on the item configuration. When our vendor has shipped the products, we mark these items as shipped. Once our vendor sends us a bill, I can quickly create the payable due to my vendor right from my purchase order, which I'll open from this fulfillment screen. All details from my purchase order copy into my vendor bill, but I'll also add Harris's invoice number into my reference field and attach a copy of their invoice that I might scan from a hard copy or cut and paste from an email under the communication tab. And then I'll save the bill. Now we're ready to invoice our customer. I'm switching to my accounts receivable role, which is responsible for all billing operations. This dashboard is focused on everything needed to quickly produce accurate invoices. Usually I create invoices as a batch process, but for the purpose of this demonstration, let's create one specific invoice. My reminders show me I have sales orders ready to invoice, so I'll click that link to review them. If I select mark all, I'm telling NetSuite to create all of the invoices and my customer setting will determine if they will be faxed, emailed, or if I should print it for mailing. I'll unmark them instead, and since I know my sales order number was 447, I will enter that in the order number box for a quick search. Then I'll click the invoice link to generate it. All of the items from my sales order that are ready to be billed have been pre-selected, so all I need to do is click save. Once the invoice is saved, I get a confirmation on screen, and I'm brought back to the screen to continue my billing process. At some point, I want to accept a payment for the customer, whether that's by check, credit card, or ACH. To find the invoice we created quickly, I will pull up the customer record, go to Sales, Transactions, and filter on the type equal to invoice in case I have a lot of transactions to sort through. Once I open the invoice, I will click on Accept Payment move to the payment method screen where let's say they send a check. I'll fill in the check number, then click save. Finally, to ensure we receive timely payments from our customers, I'll pull up a report from my favorites list to show our current aged receivables. This configurable report allows me to get down to specific invoice details in just a couple clicks. If I want to remind a customer with an overdue payment, I could easily launch an email from the invoice and select a predefined email template. Thank you for watching this demonstration. For more information,
please reach out to your account. So it's a final note, we will be sending out um, a PDF version of the slide deck to all webinar participants afterwards. If anyone's interested in a software demo or to have a discussion, typically we'll want to have a discussion first before we do the demo. Um, we'll be to tailor to your specific organization. Um, please reach out to myself or to Caitlin directly. So Q&A, are there any questions? Caitlin's going to run the question and answer section. Well, it looks like we have one question. Um, how much does NetSuite cost and what is included? So it's a very, very good question. So you would think that something as robust as this would be very expensive. Um, it is essentially, they have a different pricing schedule based on the size of your organization, what type of organization you are, what functionality you need. So it really value, it varies. I mean, it can be comparable with um, QuickBooks Enterprise all the way up to obviously, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars depending on the size and, you know, your organization. So um, certainly if there is something that you're interested in, we can definitely give you an idea of some pricing when we have that initial discussion before our demo. Any other questions? All right, we've got a couple of webinars coming up. On Monday, we have Implementing and Maintaining the New Lease Standard, so that's very exciting content. On the 16th, we're going to explore the benefits of outsourced administrative services. Actually, Laurel Parzik, I think you're still on the call. Um, Andre is gonna be guesting on this with us, so it might be that might be a nice um, webinar for you to attend, as well as Gallagher, who's our HR partner. And then um, on the 21st, we're gonna have a lease accounting demo as well. So thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. And it looks like we've got one more question. Oh, good. Can you tell me what, if you can share it, that would be great. Yes, it is. I want to know, is there contract management available? Yes, so there is contract management as a part of the tool. So I think it would be dependent on, um, we should probably schedule a call and talk a little bit about exactly what you mean by that. And we can definitely answer some more specific questions, but it really would be depending on what you need or what it's referring to. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. And um, hopefully we will schedule another conversation. If you have any more questions, please feel reach, free to reach out to Caitlin or myself. We will get you in touch with the right person. Have a great day.